dime slipped out of my hand. One rolled down the sidewalk like it knew where it was going and the other one jumped the curb. I raced after the one that rolled down the sidewalk and I caught it with a stomp of my foot, but the other one got away. <laughs> Tumbled past the grate into the never, never land of the sewer far below the street. I was 10 years old. Mom had given me two shiny new silver dimes. One was for the collection at St. Anthony's Church and the other was for a Coke and a hot cinnamon donut. As the one dime tumbled into the sewer far below the street, I exclaimed, oh no, there goes the Lord's dime. <laughs> True story. I stood there feeling a little guilty, you know, because I was Catholic. And you're kind of supposed to feel a little guilty. And then I started thinking it over, I thought, you know, lots of people put dimes in the collection, so he'll be all right. And besides, he's the Lord. He could even get the dime out of the sewer if he wanted to. <laughs> so at 10 years old, I had it all figured out. <laughs> My grandpa, Pliny Pratt, was a lot like Will Rogers. If any of you remember the old Will Rogers, old rope twirling humorist. He even looked a lot like him. And he was the first one who introduced me to wisdom and magic at the speed of thought. We were up one Sunday at the house and it was fall. There were leaves all over the yard. Grandma was in cooking bread as she often was. And Grandpa was sitting on the porch smoking his pipe, petting the dog. And I was out in the yard kicking leaves. I was having a great time kicking leaves. Well, as you can when you're a kid, you kick them and you go up and down, up and down, you get all excited. I noticed some of you maybe don't get quite as excited as you might about kicking leaves, but when I was, when I was that age, that was real excitement. Well, I kicked this one pile of leaves and underneath it, all of a sudden, a horrendous, amazing discovery. There was this lollipop. One of those big red carnival lollipops with all the swirls. I picked it up, brushed it off, and discovered that it was hardly used at all. <laughs> that was a great discovery. Now, if my grandmother Nellie had seen that, all hell would have broken loose because she would not have subscribed to the hardly used philosophy. She would have figured that I was going to die for germs at any, any moment. Now, I didn't know what, how my grandfather felt, but unbeknownst to me, he had a similar philosophy. He didn't think it was a good idea for kids to pick up lollipops, even if they were hardly used. But he had a very different way of handling it than my grandmother did. He looked at me, and I got nervous. And then he looked away. So I figured my lollipop was safe, and I started enjoying my lollipop. Pretty soon I walked over by him, and I sat by him on the porch. And he kept smoking his pipe and petting the dog, and after a little while he cocked his head and he looked over at me and he said, you know, if I had known that you had wanted to eat that lollipop, I would have told that dog not to pee on it. was the last lollipop I ever picked up in my life. <laughs> but look at the brilliance. Isn't it amazing? Years later, I thought of that. He accomplished his objective at the speed of thought. If I knew that you wanted to eat that lollipop, I would have told that dog not to be on it. If Grandma had yelled at me, I don't know what would have happened. I sure would have hid the next lollipop that I found running away. Maybe I would have ended up in therapy. I don't know. But Grandpa accomplished his objective with that one thought. Amazing. 